Hello again, Guardians, and welcome back to the channel for another episode of Xur's Day Review. This is episode 8, and I'm excited to say that it's 8 weeks into Rise of Iron's expansion. If you go to the Reef this week, and go over to Xur's normal location inside of the Reef, which is this little hangar bay over here, you will be able to go in the room, to the right-hand side, click on Xur's inventory. This little menacing tentacle face this lover is, is pretty much selling some awesome stuff this week. We're going to go over the lower stuff first because everybody wants to know about this stuff, right? Mode of Light. If you need to increase a weapon or an armor piece inside of your inventory that's equipped, use the Motes of Light. If you're trying to upgrade that blue sparrow from the hangar inside of the tower, definitely buy the Plasma Drive or the Emerald Coil. Then you've got the Heavy Ammo Sense if you want to level up a faction or just get heavy ammo sense for say the raid so I'll I mean I'll buy a couple of those then you've got the three of coins if you want to farm exotics then you've got the glass needles if you want to re-roll any of the exotics that Zura is selling for you today or for any of the exotics that you ended up getting from three of coins or maybe even the nightfall or maybe even the crucible doesn't really matter where you got the exotics you can just re-roll them into the perfect exotic that you want to equip to your guardian next up the Wolf's Remember and the Prototype. Prototype is going to be for Truth, which allows it to look like the prototype model that was being created before Truth was actually a full functional weapon. Then you've got the Wolf's Remember, which is fairly decent exotic. I will actually show you this exotic right now, and the Wolf's Remembered Ornament. So right now, that's the, that's the uh, different ornament, the Born in Fire. Then we've got the Wolf's Remembered, which is right here. Then you have also end up having the normal version of the sword, but that's boring, plain, and obvious. That's the one that was given to us. Next up, Legacy Engram. Primary Weapon Engram. If you guys are missing something from year one and you actually want to fill up your Blueprints kiosk, then buy one of these, break it down at the Crypt Dark, and you'll guarantee 9 out of 10 of the time getting the one that you're missing. Now, if you're missing a couple of them, just buy a couple of them and dismantle them and get the guns that you're missing. But if you're trying to run year three items, don't buy this. It's just a legacy engram. It will get you year one loot, which is going to be a max light level of 170. Definitely not worth the buy. Twilight Garrison, Frosties, Apotheosis Veil, and Monte Carlo. All four exotics that are actually kind of worth getting this week around, especially if you don't have them already. Now, if you do have them, you'll probably find that a couple of these might be better rolls than the ones that you already have. We're going to start off with Twilight Garrison. Twilight Garrison, it's kind of that in-between exotic, whether you should have it or whether you shouldn't have it. The Twilight Garrison for this week is going to be sniper rifle ammo and heavy weapon ammo, or special ammo and heavy ammo. We've got the solar recovery and the solar armor. I would run solar armor, especially if I was running a sunbreaker, but if I was running a striker or a defender, I'd be running solar recovery against all of those golden guns and also those self-res warlocks and also other Sunbreaker Titans. Then we've got Discipline and Strength. I'd actually rather have that to be Intellect and Discipline, but it's still an okay roll of armor for the Twilight Garrison. Now, what would you use the Twilight Garrison for inside of PvP or inside of Crucible or inside of the PvE events like Raid? Well, in the Raid, it's actually really good for evading damage and also getting out of tight situations using that press double circle circle while airborne to evade. It's actually really nice, and being able to do this with a Titan that can Titan Skate, even better. Next up though, we also want to use this inside of Crucible to evade shotgunners, sniper rifles, maybe sidearms. You can even use this to evade a fusion rifle that you know is about to go off, and also evade grenades, evade any amounts of damage. You can even evade rocket launchers that don't have tracking while you're wearing Twilight Garrison. So, very good inside of PvP. If you don't have it already, definitely worth getting. Frosties. Now, Frosties are really, really cool. They're, they're pretty awesome exotics. Now, one thing. Void Double Down. Would really like to have that as Arc Double Down because I'd be running this with my Blade Dancer. And I'll be telling you my strategy in just a minute. We've got Sidearm Ammo and Machine Gun Ammo. Two things I really like running. But some people, if you're going to be running the Blade Dancer setup, you might want to run a Shotgun than rocket launcher or machine gun. We've got intellect and we've got discipline. The two things I really want for this build. Next up, the rapid cooldown perk. Frosties are really good. Increase the turn radius. You have a tighter turn radius while sprinting, but while you're sprinting, 
you also have an increased grenade and melee regeneration while sprinting. So if you're running a blade dancer and you're using blink and you're using the sprint all the time and you're using the memory of Jolder, which is an artifact that reduces your sprint cooldown to nothing, then you'll be able to sprint the entire map, turn tight corners and turn radiuses with a shotgun, allowing you to get around corners with a shotgun very quickly and getting off your shotgun shells. Then you can also kill a lot of guardians with the increased grenade and melee regeneration using your grenades all the time, especially skip grenades if you're a blade dance, and your melee to help you go in viz or anything that you want to do with this. It's actually really good. It's a really good exotic, and if you guys don't have it, definitely purchase it. Now, I do like the roll on this one, so I'm actually going to purchase this one right now because, honestly, the roll on this one's great. 70, 70 intellect and 78 discipline max. That's pretty cool. Next up, Apotheosis Veil. Vale. Honestly, the one exotic if you have a Warlock character that you have to buy this weekend, and I will tell you why. One, the max intellect on this roll is 100, which is actually fairly high, and then the perks that's on it are a perfect roll of perks except for the strength and intellect. It's okay to run strength and intellect, but if you recognize the exotic perk on this, which is Private Reserves, immediately regenerate health, melee, and grenade energy upon activating your super. Think of the matters of a Stormcaller Warlock for a second. If you're a Stormcaller Warlock, you normally run Transcendence, which is a perk that allows you in your skill tree to have your grenade and melee charge filled. On activation of your Stormcaller, you will then regenerate all of your health. Remove Transcendence and put that as a different perk. I'm on my Warlock now to actually show you the skill tree, and we'll go over that. Now, normally the Stormcaller would love to run the Electrostatic Mind with Divine Order, Transcendence, Thunderstrike with Amplitude, the Storm Trance with Superconductor, and then Collide with the Focused Burst. But remove Transcendence and allow yourself to have this. Incoming melee attacks fully recharge and intensify your Thunderstrike. And you've also got Pulse Wave. When critically wounded, trigger a Pulse Wave that boosts speed for you and your allies. Now, if you have these, if you want to use this, you can get meleeed by anything in the game and get your melee strike back, allowing you to get a recharge and an intensify your actual melee. So, instant melee, and we're already going to be going in tune with the exotic that has the actual perks. So, Apotheos is Veil. Let's go on to the rest of the perks. So, we're going to remove Transcendence from the Stormcaller. We're going to have this. So, now we can actually use our Storm Trance and get our health grenade and also our melee back instantly. From there on out, we also have Ashes to Assessed. Gain bonus super energy on grenade kills. So now that you have your grenade from using your super, you can get your super back faster by using the grenade you just got. And we've also got Heavy Lifting. Gain bonus super energy from heavy weapon kills on minions of the darkness. Good for PvE. It allows this exotic to be used in PvE. Pretty good. But let's move on to the next perk you'd use in Crucible. Infusion. Replenishes health each time you pick up an orb of light. This can be used for PvP and PvE, but let's recognize PvP for a second since Crucible is probably one of the most important things as a challenge inside of the actual game. So, your allies are using their super. You're using your super. You're getting your great grenade and melee back. You use your grenade, you get a part of your super back. Then you pick up some orbs. While you're picking up orbs of light to get your super back, you'll get your health back. Run into a group of enemies, throw your grenades and use your melee, and then pop Storm Trance with Landfall, kill the people around you, get your grenade, melee, and your super back, and you can do it, rinse and repeat the cycle. It's actually a ridiculous exotic and probably my personal favorite out of this week's. So definitely buy the Apotheosis Veil vale from Xur this week. Next up, Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo is one of those exotics that I don't personally want to use, but a lot of people like using it still. One, the hip fire, honestly, I don't believe works anymore. It's not that great. It's better to aim the weapon to actually get kills, but it will have high caliber rounds. High caliber rounds are actually fairly effective. Now, if you're using high caliber rounds, it will help stagger targets, allowing them to not get a sniper rifle shot off on you. Next up is Monte Carlo Method. Dealing damage with this weapon reduces your melee cooldown and grants a chance to fully recharge your melee while you have a kill. So if you kill somebody with this, you'll get your melee back. 
about, I would say maybe 50% of the time, I think is roughly how it comes out to. But you have a chance to get your melee back. Now you will also recharge your melee if you're doing damage to somebody. So that's actually fairly effective. Also, not gonna lie, the gun looks fairly decent with different ornaments attached to it. As you can see clearly there, the gold and black one looks awesome, but that red and black one looks amazing too, so definitely worth getting just to have in your inventory to say that you have it. Three exotic armor pieces that are worthwhile. An exotic weapon that is also worthwhile for certain guardians. Now, I would not recommend the Monte Carlo myself, but for other guardians, it works fairly well. Now, with the nerfs and the buffs over the last three years over auto rifles, I certainly wouldn't use it, but there's other people out there that can use it fairly well. Remember, Apotheosis Veil, probably the best exotic this week to purchase from Zert. Second best is going to be Frosties, and the third best is going to be Twilight Garrison. If you're running Frosties, try to use it with a Blade Dance. Try it out, test out the method, it works fairly well. Apotheosis Veil, use it with a Storm Trance Warlock. You won't regret it. And there you have it, Guardians. That's all the information for this episode for Zer's Day Review, Episode 8. If you guys like this information, drop a like on the video, share it with your friends, and definitely comment down below any questions or concerns, and subscribe for daily Destiny content. And again, Guardians, I will see you all, Starside, in the next video.